Episode 4, here we are, and something very special showed up today, the crank-driven F1 Pro Charger for the Ford Godzilla. I can't say enough good things about Pro Charger themselves, guys. I talked to them for, <laughs> well, way too long about this, probably around three hours to figure out what I needed for this project, and I'm excited to get this thing installed and show you guys why we're going with the Pro Charger. So let's dive right in and get her bolted up. I dropped some hints in the beginning, but now it's official. And I just want to say thank you so much to Pro Charger for hooking me up with this and uh, getting it to be really quick. So this is this is where the build's going to get a little spicy. So the reason why I put the motor so far back was because this isn't a Pro Charger that mounts off an accessory drive and it's high. This is actually a crank driven Pro Charger directly in line. And as before, I stated it was about 22 inches far back. So I got a mock-up unit with the actual gearbox that we are going to bolt in today. Get this in, because then that way we can see where this motor is actually going to go. So this, this is this is going to be a huge visual representation of what this car is going to start to end up like. And uh, now that I got it on, I could actually start doing more math and figuring out the front end, because the next big part is getting the diff centered with the transfer case. And I can start tying everything together. But before we jump the cart too much, let's go ahead and get this thing installed. I can't wait to see it. I've never seen one in person. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm just as thrilled to see this thing. So it's a big box. So. Must be a lot of stuff. Let's get into it. All right, this is the first part of the puzzle. This is the actual gear drive. This is gonna spin this thing a total of 72, up to 92,000 RPM. And as you see, I didn't really explain it, but this is a front crank drive system. So this is actually bolted right to the crank. This is my gearbox, and they give me all the goodies to actually make this work. I just checked the tracking. I actually thought this was going to be in the same box, but it's not. So it's on its way. It's like two hours out. But it, this is cool, though. It gives a perfect time to start setting this up. So I'm going to go ahead, start reading up on this, get this installed. I don't have the actual crank uh, damper for this setup. It didn't come in in time, so we're just going to fake mock this up anyway because I'm really just using this to get the car situated with the drivetrain to figure out how far the motor's got to go with the wheels and all that stuff. So I have to get everything bolted up the best that I can so I don't make any mistakes when I start designing the chassis. But this is a huge step forward. I can't thank these guys enough, man. And the guy Kyle Vickler, or Stickler at, uh, at Pro Chargers was just, he talked to me for like two hours about this whole thing. So it means the world that they set me up. The, the whole thing with this too is they have an assortment of different head units for this. So depending on total cubic inches, how much power you're gonna make, same thing as a turbo. You want the, they want this thing to be in a sweet spot for how much power you're going to make. I'm looking to make anywhere from 1300 to 1600. 1300 cruising, chilling, and then I want to be able to ramp it up. So the, the head unit that I got, which I'll show you here in a minute, is perfect for where I want to be with this. There's a guy, Brian Wolf, who built one of these. He made somewhere in the 18 and 1900 range. I don't want this thing to be as maxed out as that. I don't want this to be a max effort build. I want to, I want to be somewhere in the 13, 1400 range. I want to enjoy this thing, and I want to beat the bag out of it all the time without having to swap stuff over. Hold up. I just wanted to clarify something. When I compared it to Brian Wolf, what I was trying to say is after talking to him and a few other people about this engine, there is a point where the block deflects. And I've heard a couple different numbers, but it seems to be around that range of 14, 1500. We're talking about a stock block. I'm using the cutoff here because I'm going to be doing a lot of street miles and I don't want to compromise filling this thing with concrete. Only reason I was comparing was it seems like there is a shutoff line to where I can't push this thing. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. I don't want to fill the block. I want to make this thing very street drivable. I am no way comparing it to him because he knows way more about the stuff than I do. So there it is. Just wanted to let you know so I didn't get ripped in the comments. And what's cool about this gearbox is it's very easy to actually change these gears. This one bolts and you can change the gears in here pretty simply. So once I get the car rolling and rocking, if I'm over boosted or under boosted, this front drive comes off, change the gears change the speed of the actual housing itself. It's, it's all based on RPM, so I go from 70,000 RPMs all the way up to, oh, somebody special wrong. 72,000 RPM all the way up to 92. So for now, I'm gonna start diving in this and we're gonna get it bolted in.
All right, so we got the front brackets on, but I just want to like warn you guys, this kit wasn't made for this front cover. It was made for the stock Godzilla. And as you guys know, I actually changed over all the front cover and the pan. So me and the guy were talking, uh, one of their execs, we knew that this wasn't really going to be perfect with this. This is on no means by Pro Charge. This is all me. We're putting this on this front cover. So there's going to be some things that I have to do. I can't shim all this until I get the crank on, which I, I'm still waiting for. But as you can see, we have a little problem over here. No water inlet, water outlet, which I'll fix. And then this shimming here has to be shimmed. It's way too long. So I think the plan of attack for now is get this loosened up, get it close, see how far it off when the head unit is on, and then I'll start shimming up all my brackets. When I get the damper on, that's when the magic's gonna happen. Because all this has to be perfect to the damper because there's an assembly on here that goes to the crank drive itself. So for right now, this is, this is actually awesome. So I'm gonna start bolting this all up, take notes, We'll start shimming it, but I don't want to do any big adjustments until I get my damper on. So for today, we're just going to bolt it in, get it going, see where we're at, start taking notes to make this thing perfect. But this is such a nice, such a nice kit. It's just amazing how these guys put so much effort in this thing. So yeah, I knew about this problem. We talked about it. I took the gamble on actually making it happen because I wanted this unit so bad. So yeah, it's just something I'm going to have to work around. I'm going to have to shim it, even it all up get rid of this bracket delete it and then make it come off something else and give it some stability over here somewhere but i'll figure out that down the road so for now let's just keep moving forward and seeing how this thing kind of lays up here we go Box number two came in. Can't show you my address in case you want to kill me. But anyway, this is uh, the head unit. So we're going to go ahead and get this out and get it bolted up. I was waiting a whole day, a whole day, and I was, ooh, I was getting real excited. <laughs> anyway, this is it. We, got, we have a lot of work to do to actually make the thing work. But at least we can get it up there. We can look at it and uh, marvel in it. And then I can get real to it. We can have a whole episode how to make it work with alternator and power steering and shimming it you know doing all the things but anyway on a good note we got it so let's get it and put it on and see what it looks like you know one thing i wanted to mention was a lot of you guys are probably wondering why did you go with a pro charger and some of the other choices uh which you'll find out here later on a very unconventional not really unconventional more race cars but uh the whole reason was i'm gonna make this car an automatic and it's true that a stick it's probably more fun but automatic is a lot faster when you physically pair it with a converter that's dialed for the, the setup. So what I'm gonna do is, with a four-speed automatic, with a really wild Neil Chance converter and this supercharger, it's gonna give me a feel like I never had before. I've had turbo cars, I actually have a twin turbo Chevelle, and uh, this is gonna hit instantaneously. I'm gonna shift it instantaneously, and it's gonna have grip all the time. So it's gonna feel a lot more violent you know what I mean? When I'm going to imagine trans braking this thing, you know, 4,500 RPM making full boost with a converter that's right where it's got to be with all four tires instantly gripping. It's not only going to be fun, it's going to be violent. And uh, it's going to give me a feel I never had. I never had a pro charge car. I never had a fast car that can handle. So I'm mixing all these race car things kind of together. I'm not just making it a stick because, you know, it's, it's more manly or whatnot. I want to make this car fast. I want to make it fast. I want to make it reliable. And I don't want to be changing clutches and worrying about any of that. I want to work with a true converter tech, make the converter perfect, and when this thing goes off the brake, bang! It's like a rocket ship. So, Pro Charger with an automatic is going to make for one wild ride. So, a bit about this. Off the crank, we drive this gearbox. From the gearbox, we then change the ratio to how fast we're going to spin this. This spins anywhere from 62,000 all the way up to uh, some people actually want to 92,000, but they don't recommend that. But that's you know something we can talk about later on. But recommended use at 72,000 RPM. This guided for this motor should put us somewhere in around 1300 to 1600 horsepower range, depending on how crazy I build this and depending on what we actually change us at. But this just takes quick change rear end gears, so I can just pop this thing off really quick and change the gears to change boost, and that way it's always mechanically set. Once I mechanically set it, I thought this would be perfect for the automatic because that way it's instantly set, boost comes on. 
whole idea with this whole car is that I'm designing it to build to be a really dope multi-tool, right? So I can go time, time attack, I can go to the dragway, and all I have to do is physically change a few things of adjustment on shocks, the tune, whatever the thing is, but it's gonna be very minute. So I'll roll up there with the same tires, same wheels, same combo, same tune, and be able to do multifaceted things. Now, when you build a multifaceted car, it's not gonna be the best in the world at each one of them. It's not gonna be the fastest drag car. It's not gonna be the fastest time attack car, but I'll be able to do all of them and go on the road and enjoy it. This is gonna be like, I would consider, uh, I don't know how to compare this really. It's like a Mad Max time attack, 830 drag car. <laughs> But really, I'm building this whole thing is to push myself with designing and engineering. Now, I'm a one-man band, so to do all this is uh, it's a lot, but it's it lights me up. So on that note, we're going to end this episode, and uh, I'm going to move on to the next thing. I don't know where it's going to be because i got so much to do. I'm kind of teeter-totter on everything, but I know that I want to start working on the quarter panels. I think I found some of those. I really want to start tying some tubes in, but I can't until I get the front diff in, so... Let me get back to you on that one. But the next one's going to be sick. So check in, like, and subscribe. I hope you guys like this stuff. I know I do. So I'll be watching my own videos and laughing if you guys don't watch. And on that note, I love you. I'll see you soon.